now that we've got our groom we're going to create our vape from this so the maps we're going to create in this tutorial are the alpha the root normal map ao and height and then from these we can create things like the diffuse and the specular uh, the maps you may need will vary from whatever engine you're putting it in so for this tutorial i'm going to be putting it into marmoset um, Things like root and stuff we don't necessarily need in Marmoset, but I find they're helpful for creating the diffuse and stuff later, so it's worth baking one out. So we're going to switch back to Maya Classic, press space bar, and go to the top view, like this. Start to groom back on. Select the descriptions, and go generate, convert interactive groom to polygons. So we want to make sure we've got combined mesh turned on. We are going to split it up later, but just for this, it's easier and quicker to do combined mesh. Um, none of these settings really matter. And press convert. I've got the converted geometry. So now we'll put it back into Maya Classic. This because we don't need it anymore. And there we've got our geometry. So from here, I'm going to create my low poly geometry to bake onto. So literally just a flat plane, doesn't need any subdivisions, and make sure it sits directly behind. So I'll tend to go to this view for this. Turn on wireframe 7C. Before I do that, I'm just going to unwrap this one to make it easier. I tend to group these together just to make it easier. So stick those on a group called low and then we will go to unwrap. So when it comes to UV layout, there's not really much of an art to it. I like to keep them all going along one straight square like this. Squeeze them all as close in as possible. And then if I got a long line like this, instead of putting them this way and that way, I'll just extend them all down just to take up the majority of the UV space. Obviously the bakes will stretch a little bit, but they're going to be stretching anyway, so it shouldn't matter too much.
and then we've got that's our low poly for baking and then what I'm going to do now is duplicate these actually I'm just going to bring these up a bit anyway you want to make sure that you don't have any clipping through here so obviously close enough that it'll catch it but not close enough that it does this Right, so now we've done that, we're going to duplicate this and call this one height. So we'll use these for baking the height mats in X normal. So you want the card to sit about halfway through the clump. Oh, this is a bit funky, but oh well. But where this card sits just affects the way the depth mask comes out. So I've found that half, about halfway through it gets good results. Obviously you need the same UVs as that. Now we're just going to add some UVs to these so that our root map bakes correctly. So you want to go this, select going to arrange and lay out and lay out along U and then modify, normalize and normalize along V. Sorry. And now each strand is going top to bottom like this in a straight line. And we'll just do the same. Yeah, now that we've done that, we're going to split all of these into singular strands. Go and mesh separate. Now, comprise of individual mes meshes. Delete the history from that to be safe. So what we want to do is split these into five groups and with those five groups we're going to apply five different levels of grayscale. So black and white and then what that's going to do is create a unique map which I didn't make for this. But this is also really useful for the diffuse. which you can you can actually separate off individual hairs like this and apply different colours to them in Photoshop which gives a really nice variety. We'll be using a script that I get from this website here. I will include this script in in the files so don't worry um, but for reference this is the tutorial that goes through how to do it if you'd like to refer back to that anyway we select all these mes meshes run the tool and then we're going to select 50% and then that will literally select 50% of the meshes here. I'm going to unpair them from their groups, group them, and then hide them. And then we're going to do, do it again, but with 33%. Again with 25 Again with 20, yeah. 
when in theory, this should have a relatively even distribution of heads. It doesn't have to be perfect, just rough. So these are our high poly groups. So what I'm going to do is export all of this now. And then while I'm here, another thing I'm going to do is duplicate these. And then I'm going to add thickness to them. So I'm just going poly modeling, extrude, give it a sec, and add 1.05 worth of thickness. So this is a step that I do because some of the maps I choose to bake in Marmoset, and Marmoset for some reason doesn't like from my experience, doesn't like the single sided geometry, so I just add this thickness for this version. So, first things first, we're going to bake the alpha. So, high definition. Meshes, right click, add meshes. So what we're going to do is add all of the hair high and the hair low. And then to the hair high, we're going to add a base texture to bake, which will be this white texture and then to the low we'll add black. I'll include all of these in the files. And then low definition meshes. Light poly. I tend to add about 50 of these just to make sure it catches it. Um, so I bake at 8k um, and then I downsize it later it's just a habit to keep good quality and it doesn't take too long in X normal so keep it like that uh, tick on base bake base texture and then generate maps it's uh, alpha done so I'll just use this as the base to start our PSD. So I group that and call it alpha. Save it. Texture. Uh, underscore. And then when we save, we can add what map it is. Okay, so next we're going to create the root. So we remove this now. Reset. And then we're going to use this gradient. Do the same. Output. Root. Now we'll bake the unique texture. So just go through and apply. each grayscale texture. So you don't have to do any of this in Marmoset, I just find it's quicker for the it's quicker for the ambient occlusion. Saves me waiting for it. In X Gen, in X Normal. So, so we'll use the thick and the hair low. So we just bake normals and ambient occlusion. 
Okay, so finally the last map we need is the height. So label that as is, and then in the low definition we're going to swap it for the height mesh that we created. Settings at 50. And select height map here. So what X, what X normal will do for you is open this new window with the height and you'll get a chance to edit the settings. So you can change the min, min and max point here. It's kind of like the levels of it, I suppose. So I like to try and just get a little, as much variation in it as possible. We can always edit them further in Photoshop later. Close that window once you're done and it will finish baking. So as you can see in our height maps, this has ended up being completely white and that's because this is floating way higher then it should be at this kind of weird angle and obviously this is why we want the height mesh to be kind of nicely in between so we can get these good varied bakes so what I'm actually going to do is just move the pivot point and get this sitting a little bit better and then I will export it as on its own much better. So another map that you can bake that's commonly used um, but we won't use it for this tutorial but I'll let you know how to do it anyway is a flow map so Unreal, the Unreal hair shader usually likes to use this. Um, this is a map that basically tells the anisotropic thing uh, what direction the hair is going in. So for this one um, we're going from top to bottom straight down. We don't need to give any more information than that. Um, it will be required if, for example, you've got curly hair. Um, I'd recommend it for like, you know, any kind of afro hair, hair that's going in lots of different directions, or maybe even if you decide to pack your hair in a different direction. So if you don't have room all the way across, for example, and you decide to put some running from root to tip along the bottom like this, or if you've got a cap or a shell, you know, anything like that, a flow map is really useful. So um, with our high poly mesh, um, we're going to want to have unwrapped this uh, same way as I showed you earlier. And then in the base texture to bake, we're going to add this texture here. And this is basically telling it the direction of up or down. I can't remember which is which. Um, so it knows how to run this color, this normal map along the strand. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing this. Uh, it doesn't have to be done in X normal. You can do it in Maya. Um, you can apply a material to the strands themselves and bake it or render it within Maya. Um, but I just prefer to do it all in X Gen. So I will link some tutorials in case you're interested in another technique. Um, but yeah, so we add this base texture to bake and turn on base texture as a tangent space normal map. Uh, put in our low poly, baking, base texture to bake, flow, and then bake. Okay, so now that's baked, um, go into the channels and we're going to invert the red. And then with this map, we just go in and stick it in here. 